Hey guys, it's Jen from I Create Crafts. In today's video tutorial, I'll be showing you step by step how to create these cute DIY Easter round wood signs. I absolutely love how these turned out and the full cost to make one was under $2. Now let's get started. Oh my gosh, guys, I am so excited that spring is finally here. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe it. So I am in the spring mood of making uh, some new signs. So I purchased this everybody, every bunny welcome off of Design Bundles. If you're interested in this file, I will leave it in the link description below. But I thought it was so cute. So I wanted to show you really quick. I bought these uh, wood pieces off of Amazon. It was $18 for 12 of them. Really, really great deal. These are the thinner ones. I've used these in the past. I've talked about these in the past, but I really, really like these. And it's a lot cheaper than going to, you know, Menards or Home Depot and buying those really big, heavy duty ones. Um, so I just wanted to show you where I got mine from, but I love these. Again, I'll leave the link in the description below in case you're interested in this, but I just wanted to show you what they look like. They are 12 by 12, so they are the perfect size for any door hangers. You can even put it in your living room room, you know, wherever you want it, just jazz it up a little bit and make it look good. So the design here, I love it. I just don't like the welcome word here. So I wanted to switch it up a little bit. So this is up to you if you want to do this or not. You can skip forward if you know how to do it or if you just want to cut it out the way it is. But looking at the welcome, I just don't like how it looks so much. So I'm just going to up it a little bit. So I'm going to start over here on the text box here and I'm just going to type in welcome. And I was going around with different fonts and I was trying to figure out which one I really like that would go with this. And I chose this one. It's called a child's year. So I just went up into the font box and I found, found it in design space. So it was right here. So I think for this one, if you have the Cricut Access, you will get this one for free. And if not, it might charge you for it, but I'm not sure how much because I do have the Cricut Access. It might be something to think about. I know it's about 90 or $100 for the year, which really isn't that bad. You get a whole bunch of fonts and everything. I'm not pushing you to get it. I'm just saying I've had it for the past year and I really love it. So just something to think about. In case you're interested in that, I will leave a link below. I will be honest with you, I am affiliated with it. So if you purchase it, I do get a little percentage kickback. I think it's like 2% they give me, which really isn't anything like $2 for every person that signs up, but it definitely helps me out. So if you're interested in that, please sign up under me if you are. And going back to the video, sorry about that. So again, I'm using a child year font. I really like how this looks. So I'm gonna first figure out the size on here and I'm just gonna take this double arrow and pull it over. And then I'm gonna unlock it here and then just make it a little bit larger. I'm trying to make it about the same size as it is already. Um, so I'm just kind of playing around with it and there, so before I get rid of it. So unfortunately with this, I tried working with this file already. You can ungroup it, but every bunny welcome is all connected. So I already have this selected. I'm gonna go up here to the ungroup box and I'll show you what I mean. So every bunny welcome is all one piece. They welded it when they created this file. So the only way that you're gonna be able to do that and get rid of the welcome here is go down to this contour button. I'm really liking this button the more I'm learning about it. So you click on contour and then it shows you what you selected. So I wanna get rid of welcome. So you can do it one of two ways. You can go here and click these words or the letters here, or you can go to the side and click them here, which might be easier because then you get every single piece. So I think I got them all. And then you don't wanna hide anything. You, you can X out of it or just kind of click on the other side of the screen. So as you see, I have just every bunny here. The welcome is gone. So now I'm just gonna replace it with mine. So the last thing I wanna do actually is select both of these and then align them so it's nice and centered. So I have it selected. I'm gonna go up to the line button, oh my gosh, and select center. So that's gonna center my words together. So the last thing I wanna do is change the color. So I'm gonna select the first one here, go up to the color box, and I'm just gonna choose like a green color. And then I'm gonna do the same with the welcome. Go up to the color box, choose the same color I just chose. Then I'm gonna do one more thing, select both of these since it's already centered. I'm gonna go down here and push attach. And if I don't do that, that would just cut out, you know, every bunny and then welcome separate, which I don't wanna do. So 
There's one more thing I'm going to do on this because I know my round sign is 12 by 12. I'm going to go here, click shape, click on a circle, and then change the circle to be 12 by 12. So I'm not going to unlock it up here. I'm just going to change the width to 12, which will automatically change the height to 12. So here it is here. So if you guys know me, you follow my channel, you know I like to visualize things. So that's what I'm doing here. Instead of guesstimating how big this should be, I can actually visualize it right here. So I'm going to grab all of this. And I'm going to move it. Whoops, I missed a piece. I'm going to get this out of the way. I'm going to grab all of it, and then I'm going to move it over. So it's still here. Just because you don't see it, it's still there. So I'm going to let go of that. I'm going to shrink my screen just a little bit so we can see it. And with this already selected, I'm just going to go up here to the Arrange button, and I'm going to send to Front. So here it is. So my image was behind the circle here. So see, now we can visualize it to see what it looks like. So I'm just going to take this double arrow and I'm just going to move it. So you could basically do, you know, change this to be 12 by 12, but it will not be, you know, it'll be too big. It won't fit in your round circle. So again, we're not going to cut out the black part. It's just to visualize what it's going to look like. So you can see here, this is telling me that it's too large and Cricut only lets you cut, cut, I think it's 11 and a half by 23 and a half. So I'm not going to cut this, uh, black piece out. I just wanted to visualize it. So if you did, like I said, 12 by 12 or even 11 and a half by 11 and a half, that would be too large for you to put onto your circle. So I like to just look at it. So a couple of things that I'm noticing here, I don't have much room at the top up here. So if you want to put greenery or anything, you can definitely shrink this up a little bit. Um, even if you wanted to make the welcome a little bit smaller so you could put it down at the bottom, which I think I might actually do. Uh, I really like the size of the bunnies here, so I'm going to leave that alone. So I'm going to click out of here and then click on this welcome part and make it just a little bit smaller so we could fit it down more so we're not missing so much down here. So I really like how this looks. It doesn't matter if this is centered with the bunnies because it's all going to cut out separately anyway. So I'm just going to bring this down and see if I can fit anything else on here. I mean, you always could make the bunnies larger if you wanted, but... I like it the way it looks and when your bunnies are going to cut out I'm going to show you really quick they come out in two different pieces so the bunny tail is off and you can choose to cut out the bunny tail white or you can use like um, a cotton ball which I think I might be using so I'm actually not going to cut out these guys I'm actually going to delete it right away <laughs> that looks kind of funny um but I'm not. I'm gonna use a cotton ball instead. Uh, otherwise, if you wanted to cut out the white vinyl, vinyl, you can most certainly do that. But I like the way it looks, and I'm going to actually have a white sign on the back, and then I'm going to be using similar colors to this. I chose green because it kind of reminds me of spring as well. So these are the colors I'm going to choose. Hopefully, I have these colors. I believe that I do. Um, but yeah, so I like how it looks. The only thing I got to do is just get rid of the circle because we're not going to cut that. And this is already selected and welded together or attached together, I should say. Actually, I'm going to weld it because I'm not sure when they made this file if they welded this part together. And if they didn't, it, you would see little cut lines in each one of these pieces where they put them together. So to save a headache, just in case, I'm going to click the weld button. And that's going to help me out. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. I'm going to click make it. And then here's my first bunny, the pink one and the yellow one. And then here's my welcome, every bunny welcome. So I love how this looks. I can't wait. Guys, I'm like so in love with making these wood signs. I hope you do too. I have a whole bunch more coming. So if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Leave me some comments below. I love reading your guys' comments. So keep them coming, please. But I'm having a lot of fun. I hope you're enjoying this video. All right, so now that my base material has popped up, I'm just going to show you what I'm going to use. Um, you could, if you have like the holographic kind, you can use that. I actually was just at Joanne Fabrics and I bought a whole bunch of holographic vinyl. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to do something with it. So again, stay tuned. I have so many more videos coming up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I'm really excited, guys. I'm going to keep going. So for this one, I'm just using regular stencil vinyl. If you guys are subscribers of mine, you know I don't use a lot of Cricut brands, so I'm just going to use this one. I'm not using the Cricut stencil vinyl, um, but this is the one that I like doing. So I'm going to click on this one. I'm going to cut these out. I'll weed it out. This is going to be a very 
easy project to weed out and then I'll show you how to work on your wood sign there is a little bit of work that you have to put into it but don't worry I will show you step by step how to do it so I will be right back guys okay so I finished my painting here is the purple one that I did I did both sides and I made sure to get the edges really well and then here is my white one so I just did white on both sides and then I have my files cut out here the cute three little bunnies and then the word everybody every bunny welcome i thought that was really cute one thing i did with the signs or the wood pieces before i um, go ahead and put the stencil or the vinyl on i actually sprayed this with polycrylic i highly recommend this it's going to seal the paint that I put on here. So if you wanna hang this outside and it gets wet or something, this paint's not gonna run, it's gonna stay on here forever. So you wanna do that beforehand. I like using the spray instead of the um, can one because then you won't see brush stroke. So you just spray both sides and let it sit. I let it sit overnight so it's completely dry. Um, so the next step you're gonna do is just take some contact paper. I just purchased this huge thing of contact paper off of Amazon. I'll leave the link below, but as you can see, there's ton of tons of it on here. Um, I recommend using the contact paper rather than like the Cricut brand or something because you don't want something that's really, really sticky or it's going to pull off your paint. So I'm just using something that's less sticky. Um, the other thing you want to look at is which side is better. So on here, I have a few little pieces where the paint got stuck to my paper I was using, so I'm gonna sand that off. So I'm just gonna use my better side on here. The other thing you wanna look for is where, which way the grain is going. I always like to go with the grain side to side rather than up and down, so that's what I'm going to do. And for the little bunny tails, I didn't have any cotton balls, but I had these, and I figured out that if you pull them apart, it actually does have cotton on the inside of it. So I just used that with my hot glue gun to put the little tails on. You can do that, or you can use the Cricut piece that it cut out for you originally. I remember that I took mine off, so I never cut those out. So the next step you wanna do is just put it together. If your wood feels kind of rough, I would go ahead and go with it with, I think it was, what did we use? 320 grit paper, sandpaper, and just make it nice and smooth again. You don't want any hard surfaces on here. So depending on which color you want, oh, I wanna show you guys really quick. So I actually did go ahead and do one. I couldn't wait, guys, so I wanted to show you. So here's what it looks like. So you can do it any way you want. These are the little bunny tails that I used with the cotton that I had and it says every bunny welcome. So here's the white one. So I love how this looks. I put some ribbon on the back and then I just use some hot glue on the back so it looks nice and neat. Um, but you can do it any way you want, any colors you want, but I just wanted to show you, I was really excited and I couldn't wait. So that's what that one looks like. So you take your bunnies and you just figure out which color you wanna lay first. I actually like doing the letters first because then you can kind of center it on your board before you go ahead and try to figure out where your bunnies go so i already used this piece of transfer tape i'm just going to reuse this one and put it over this and then use your scraper and then just scrape it on really well making sure that you get every piece that will pull up on your uh, transfer tape and once you have it i always like flipping it upside down so i can see if i grab everything And if you don't, you can just push it right back down. Very simple. And then this next part is up to you whether you want to do it or not. I always say homemade things aren't always perfect. You can most definitely get a ruler out and kind of figure out where it goes in the center. I like to just eyeball it. Um, I'm putting it more down at the bottom because I want the little um, piece for up at the top. So it's kind of going more down at the bottom. I'm just kind of looking on both sides to see if it's center, since we have a circle, it's kind of hard to mess up on it, but I'm going with the green on it, so I'm just trying to find a good spot on here, which you can always just pick it up and look at it and kind of tell where it is, so kind of think it needs to go over a little bit more, but once you get it figured out where you want to do it, you just want to take your scraper and go over it, so I like where this looks. I'm just going to take my scraper again and scrape really well. I want this to completely stick to it. And like I said, the poly is completely dry on it. The paint is completely dry. So I shouldn't have any problems with the paint coming up or with the vinyl coming up. If your vinyl does come up, then you really need to go back and um, re-sand it. So that's why you need a really smooth sand or really smooth surface so your vinyl can stick to it. So if your vinyl does not come off, like this one hasn't, 
you know that you have a really good surface. So here's the first part, every bunny welcome. I think that is so stinking cute. So the next part is to set your bunnies up. So I don't want them to be the same. My first one was pink, blue, and yellow. So I think this one I'm going to do first the blue one. So the same thing, I'm just gonna take my transfer tape and I'm gonna put it over it. I'm gonna squeegee this down and then flip it upside down, making sure I get everything. And then again, you can take a ruler or you can eyeball it and kind of see where you want it to go, but I'm just gonna put it roughly over the E and then the R and every. And then take your scraper, scrape it down, and then pull back your transfer tape. It's as easy as that, oh my gosh. I love this, I think it's so cute. What do you guys think? You like this? Give me a thumbs up if you guys like this and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So then you just wanna do the same with your second and your third one, so I'm just gonna line this up with my transfer tape. I'm still using the same piece of transfer tape that I did with my first sign. I try to let these go as far as possible without getting any holes or anything in it. Again, just flip it upside down. And then just go with the next part. So you wanna just take it and line it up. This one actually is gonna go a little bit higher. So this one's gonna be a little bit higher up just because it's going to be over the B in bunny. So this guy, I'll show you really quick. He's up a little bit higher, but that's okay. However you guys wanna do it, it doesn't have to go one way or another, but I'm going to center him. So his ears are nice and center with the top. So take your time with this, figure it out. And then once you have it where it is, you just take your scraper and then pull it off. Perfect. So here are the two. And I'm just gonna do the same thing with the last one. So I'm just gonna fast forward this part. You guys don't have to watch me do this again. It's just the same process. So there, that is it just like that. Um, like I said, before when I was banking science, I would always do the poly now, but from experience, I know that if I do it now, the vinyl will stick up and start peeling. This is 651 vinyl, so this is meant to stick on forever. So I'm not going to do that. I did the poly before or after I colored it before I put the vinyl on. So that definitely is gonna work out a lot better. Um, if you have any pieces that aren't laying flat or if you have pieces on here that uh, some of the board was not sanded well, you can always go back with this. Use a hairdryer on low heat and kind of use your fingers and push it in. It kind of melts into the wood, which I really like. So that could be another option as well. So the only other thing I have to do now is take the little cotton that I had. So again, I just pull this apart. You can use a cotton ball, but I didn't have one right now, so I'm using what I have on hand. So I just pulled this apart and then just took out the middle cotton pieces here and then just roll it into a ball because bunny tails are not perfect, are they? So just like this, I'll take a little dab of hot glue and then I'll glue it down just like that. And then the same with the back. I have this ribbon already and I just cut little slits on the side here and then I'll put it on the back here. So you wanna make sure that you're gonna put it on proper, meaning you want it to be straight in the front. So I always just start with one end and then I look before I glue the other one down. So you wanna just do it right in the middle, just like that. So I'm not gonna show you guys this, you guys know how to do this, but I'm gonna show you the last one when it's all finished. I'm really excited about the purple one. I wanted just to incorporate a little bit of extra color. So I'm gonna finish this up with the cotton tails here. I'm gonna put this on and I'm gonna work on this purple one. And then when I'm finished, I'm gonna show you guys all what it looks like. So stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed this how-to video. I had so much fun creating these Easter signs and I cannot wait to put them up for sale in the craft stores that I sell in. I added some ribbon to the back so I could easily hang them up. If you like this tutorial, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, as I will be creating more DIY wood signs and so much more. Happy crafting, everyone.